Welcome to HiFi, a high yield physics lecture series to help you become a better radiation oncologist and help you pass boards. In this video, we're going to go over considerations in field matching. There are a number of reasons you might want to combine two therapy beams adjacent to each other. You could be treating a long target requiring greater than 40 square centimeters, or you could be treating sites that are next to each other but need to be treated with different techniques. First, let's go over field matching with two photon fields. The simplest way to match fields is to use a half beam block, in which half of each beam is blocked by bringing one jaw to isocenter. This removes divergence from that side of the beam, and therefore two half beam blocked fields can abut without overlapping each other. However, this restricts your field size by half. We might use this technique to limit overlap dose to a previously irradiated field when treating some breast patients with opposed tangents and a supraclavicular field, or when patients require two techniques such as opposed lateral superiorly and an APPA approach inferiorly to treat the disease but avoid treating through the shoulders. When you have a larger field to treat, we will need to use two different isocenters, which means we need to take an alternative approach. Let's start by drawing two photon beams matching right here at the skin of the patient. Matching them like this gives you a hot spot deeper where the two beams overlap each other. One way to deal with this is by separating the fields a little so that they match down here at some depth in the patient instead of at the skin surface. The result is that there's some gap, which we'll call G, at the skin of the patient. With the field set up like this, there's going to be a hot spot within the patient at some depth and a cold spot superficially. It's important to keep your hot spot out of critical structures and likewise your cold spots out of gross disease. We can deal with these hot and cold spots by feathering the gap. Feathering the gap means that you move the junction between the two fields after some number of fractions, which softens or feathers the dose along the field edges. This smears out and reduces both the hot and cold spots between the fields over time across the entire treatment. Now let's give you some numbers and equations here for calculating the gap based on the depth you want to treat. We start with the first field and then the second field. There's a gap at the skin, a match point, and an overlap area of the beams as they exit the patient. Say we want to match at some depth D, the patient is set up at some source to skin distance, SSD1, with a field size we'll call FS. There's a gap between the fields called G. What we want to do is find the gap given the known parameters. First, let's draw two lines, one from the junction of the fields up to the skin surface, which is the depth D, and one from the source of this field down to the skin surface, which is the source to skin distance, SSD1. We'll call these distances along the patient surface G1, which makes up part of the gap length, and L1, or length 1, which is the length from the central axis to the edge of the field at isocenter. In our pictured example, isocenter happens to be at skin, so L1 is measured at skin surface. Keep in mind that your fields can be asymmetric, so you want to be looking at the length of your field at isocenter, from central axis to the edge at which you're matching. This now gives us two triangles and we'll take advantage of the fact that they're similar triangles. These two triangles are similar in that they have the same angles and are proportional to each other, so we can relate them to each other. We're going to pull out these two triangles and enlarge it over here and label it. Here is G1, which is part of the gap, and here is D, which is the depth of the match point in your patient. The other triangle, SSD1 and L1, for the length from the central axis to the edge of the field. Now you can see G1 is to D as L1 is to SSD1. That's the rule of similar triangles. Let's rewrite this as G1 equals L1 times D, the depth over SSD1. So that's the equation for this part of the gap. To get the full gap, you'll have to repeat this calculation for the other side, which we'll call G2 using L2, which is the length from central axis to the edge of field 2. You could also have different SSDs for the second field, so we'll call this source-to-surface distance SSD2. Therefore, the total gap 
is the sum from gap 1 and gap 2, so our equation will look like this. This is the gap that could be feathered to minimize those hot and cold spots. Some sources show the equation slightly differently, but this method minimizes calculation error with asymmetric fields. Also, remember that field size is defined at isocenter, so if you were using an SAD setup, you would use L1 and SAD to find this gap. The other way to match abutting photon fields is to use collimator and couch rotations. These rotations do not utilize a skin gap, but actually match the divergence of the beams, so there aren't significant hot or cold spots, and can be used in many scenarios with a variety of beam arrangements. The goal here is to rotate the collimator of field 2 to match the angle of divergence from field 1, and to rotate the couch to match the angle of divergence from field 2. In order to solve for these angles, we will use our old friend Sokotoa. For the collimator angle, we want to know this angle here. We would typically know L1 and SSD1, so we have the opposite and adjacent dimensions. Therefore, we can take the inverse tangent of L1 divided by SSD1 to get this angle. This accounts for the divergence from field 1. To account for the divergence of field 2, you will need to kick the couch toward the side of the beam you are treating. Now we are solving for this angle. Again, we will use the same formula, but this time we would use dimensions from field 2. Now we will go through an example of how field matching may come up in practice with a craniospinal irradiation case. Here, the goal is to treat the whole craniospinal axis of the patient, which is accomplished with a combination of PA spinal fields set up with SSD and two opposed lateral whole brain fields set up SAD. We will start with the spine treatment. For this patient, the spinal axis measures 60 centimeters, which is too long to fit in a single field or to use a half beam blocked technique. Recall that the field size on most Linux is limited to 40 by 40 centimeters at isocenter. So in this case, we use two separate fields with two different isocenters, signified by blue and green dots here, using an SSD technique. The match point in this case is the anterior aspect of the thecal sac, so we can avoid a hot spot within the cord. So here, the goal is to calculate the gap on the skin. Let's use the following data. Field size is 30 by 6 centimeters in each beam, and our match point is at a depth of 7 centimeters. SSD is 100 centimeters. Now we can fill in our formula. L1 is the length from central axis to the edge of the field, so half of 30, which is 15 centimeters. Since these fields do not have asymmetric jaws, L2 is also 15 centimeters. In this case, SSD1 and SSD2 are 100 centimeters. Plugging these values in, we get 2.1 centimeters. That is the gap on the skin for our posterior spinal fields. The cranial portion of this treatment is delivered with two opposed lateral whole brain fields, measuring 12 by 12 centimeters and treated with an SAD technique. We will need to account for the upward divergence of the superior PA spine field and the downward divergence of the lateral whole brain field. Here is where our collimator and couch rotations are used. To account for the upward divergence of the PA spine field, we need to rotate our collimator. We will use the same principles we talked about earlier. Let's draw our triangle and notice the angle we are solving for. We need to take the inverse tangent of L1 from our superior spinal field of 15 centimeters divided by SSD1 of 100 centimeters, which is 8.5 degrees. To account for the downward divergence of the right cranial field, we need to rotate our couch toward the side of the beam. So for this case, a rightward couch kick. We are solving for this angle. Again, we use the same formula, but this time we use dimensions from the whole brain field setup. So L3, the distance from central axis to the edge of the whole brain field, at SAD. Now we take the inverse tangent of 6 divided by 100 and see that we need a 3.4 degree couch kick. And there we have it, 
treatment of the full craniospinal axis without creating unsafe hotspots. If we move the match point of the spinal fields by feathering, we could also avoid unsafe cold spots. So there you have it, the various ways to match abutting photon fields. The rule of triangles is a little abstract, so feel free to re-watch until it sinks in.